triumphant from all our foes. Through the crucible unscathed, we passed victorious. Our trumpets pealing the glorious song. Play it, sing it, all hail be your throng. Give it to any of those I make as you, Maggie. Give it where you got any of the Angelina. All the Nina and Capri that was a mother didn't. Nina and Open Anagi Bonyan are water. Can you wear up for the young Wangi Bushmill and Candia? I keep wearing Melan Yabere. Tapan, can you never be good? Can you not swear, Bianni Rugi? Can you wear make up Yafra with Guzzo Sika? Can you wear any better man's in your house of the Transopron, eh, Jamma? Sit an epic in Marone, be said. He said, He said, Mamma de Rigichineke. Mamma de Rigichineke. Mamma de Rigichineke. That is the language of heaven that I have prayed in and we shall continue. Welcome my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, thank you very much for your contributions on the channel. If you have not subscribed, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remain blessed. For those who have already subscribed, please each time you watch my video, Remember to go to the comment section and keep your comment. Write your comment. Say it the way you feel it. Express yourself. If you want to contradict or if you want to say anything, just put it down in the comment section and make it constructively so that we can learn from one another. Thank you so much and remember us. Today, once again, we are here talking about the situation of the contraption called Nigeria. As you all know, we are still ongoing in a prayer that our, city, our Supreme Leader, Mazen Nandekano, has directed us to pray. That prayer is very, very important. That is why I always remind you of the prayer. If you have not joined us yet, please kindly join. It is not late yet. Pray for Mazen Nandikano. Pray for Biafra. Pray for the freedom of every indigenous person in that country from called Nigeria. Prayer is going to lead us through. We are not just praying. We are also walking. As you pray, you walk. Air your own opinion in your own platform. No matter how small your platform is, no matter how big your platform is, you can express yourself. Say your views. Say it exactly the way it is. Bring the important things into the front burner so that the people of the world will know what is going on in the country of Korn, Nigeria. As you all know, nobody will speak for you and nobody is going to speak for me. We will speak for ourselves. Say it the way it is. The conventional media are trying by all means possible to change the narrative. They are trying by all means possible to suppress the danger that is coming to Nigeria. But we will not let them. We will let the world know what is going on and what is happening. That is why we are here. That is why we continue to be online to speak our voice. The contraption called Nigeria doesn't mean well for you, doesn't mean well for me, doesn't mean well for any indigenous tribe in that very place. That is why we are speaking up. You have to speak up. IPOB being the strongest voice that is speaking about the issues of things happening in Nigeria, with all the social media warriors talking, they have come under serious attack several times. You know there has been attack upon IPOB for a very long time from all corners, from all angles. Attacking us from all angles, from all sections. But we will not relent in our efforts. We will continue to speak. Continue to say it the way it is. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter how they try to press us down. It doesn't matter the propaganda they are pushing. We will continue to march on. Continue to say it exactly the way it is. And that is what we are doing. The enemies are trying by all means possible to see that they infiltrate the struggle of Biafra. To see that they confuse us in the struggle of Biafra. We will not allow them to confuse us. As many as are speaking up for the freedom of the people of Nigeria. Freedom of the people who are trapped in that contraction called Nigeria. It doesn't matter your tribe. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter where you belong. As long as you are still in that very country called Nigeria, you are trapped. You are trapped. And if you don't know you are trapped... You are the most disgraceful person and you are the most clueless person. If you are in the contraption called Nigeria and you don't know you are trapped, you, need, you really need a special deliverance for you to be able to be redeemed. Because everyone in that contraption called Nigeria is trapped. Regardless of their religion or tribe, we are all trapped. 
and the only people who are trying by all means possible to subjugate everybody and play to the tune of the colonial master, which is Britain, is the Fulani Janjaweed. The Fulani Janjaweed has been a tool that they are using to suppress other indigenous tribes. The Fulani Janjaweed are pursuing one thing and one thing alone, the Fulanization of Nigeria and the Islamization of Nigeria. Not just Islamization, the Islamization of Nigeria with their own kind of Islam. Because the kind of Islam that, that these people are preaching is not the Islam that we know. We have a lot of Muslims in the southern part of Nigeria who are doing very well. We have friends, we have families and relatives who are among them. But they are living good, even getting intermarried with other religions. But you can't find that among the Fulanese. You can't find it among the Fulani Janjaweed in the north. What they are preaching is either you follow them or they take your life. That is the message. And if you don't know that this is what is coming, you better wake up. Our Supreme Leader Mazen Nandikana has done the necessary thing he has to do. He has laid down a plan for you to save yourself. But yet, I can see that some people decide to die instead of live. For those who have decided to give up their life, we will not force them. Your life is in your hand to take it. Your freedom is in your hand to take if you want to take it. For the Biafras, we are standing tall. It doesn't matter what the Janjaweed and the enemies are doing. To infiltrate the struggle of Biafra, they will never succeed. Mazen Nandikana has put some mechanism that we must follow for us to achieve Biafra. And that is what we are following. The DOS is speaking for you and I. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what you think in your head. The DOS are the people we are going to be following because Martin Nandikano established DOS and his part of them and he gave them to us to guide us through our freedom. And we have to obey the DOS. Nobody's above mistakes. Sometimes they might take some difficult decisions that you might not like. What you have to do is to go down in prayer and begin to pray for them for special revelation, complete revelation, divine revelation, so that they can be able to follow the tune that will lead us to success. If you are the prayerful type, you cannot relent in your effort. When I'm talking about prayer, you pray and walk. Prayer is the key. The person whom we are following, the leader of the struggle that we are following, we all are following, is a prayerful man. He prays seven good times a day. It is not a joke. That is why before anything happens, he's aware. Even before they kidnap him, he was aware that he was going to be kidnapped. Are you surprised why the prayer started before it happened? He told us to prepare for what is about to come. And what is happening, that we should walk and pray with him. That was a message, a strong message that many people have forgotten. He didn't just come from the blues and say we should start praying. He saw something. That was why he told us to pray and, and stand strong with him. Just like Jesus did when during his own time. Why Jesus to, was about to be betrayed. Why Jesus was about to be betrayed, he took his disciples and went to pray. He told them to stay and pray along with him for him to prepare and come back. But some of them were sleeping. Just as so many people are sleeping now, they can't even pray. They can't even pray just once a day with Asun Damas and Nadekan. Very, very soon, Asun Damas and Nadekan is coming back in victory. He's coming back in victory, very victorious. It doesn't matter what the rumors are going there. It doesn't matter the propaganda. If you are one of those that he wishes Martin Nandikan to death, you are going to die before him. It is already happening. Every single person that is talking ill about Martin Nandikan, predicting the death of Martin Nandikan, will surely go down. They will die before him. Martin Nandikan is going to come alive. Come out alive, lead us into Biafra, and he's going to grow old with us. That is the absolute truth. It doesn't matter what you think. For those who are having negative thoughts about the swindling of Martin Nandikan, you are wishing yourself death. So many of them are taking their result already. There are so many of them on social media. Go to social media. You will see people who are been taking their result already because of what they have predicted against Asun Lamaze Nadekan. And for those of you who are predicting evil, be very, very careful. You are risking your life. You are risking your own very life. For those who are trying to infiltrate the struggle of Biafra, trying to put confusion in the life of the Biafrans, you are just wasting your time. As long as you know, I will continue to follow every single person that was in the Amazon Nadikan has mentioned with his own mouth that we should follow and listen to them. I will continue to listen to them with my brain intact to know what is going on. I will continue to listen to DOS and I want you to listen to DOS. I will continue to listen to Simon Epa because I want you to listen to Simon Epa. He has a great information and he is doing marvelously well. There is no doubt about it. I will continue to listen to my ego general. These are people who are doing wonderful programs that you can listen to and get insight of what is happening. There are so many things I cannot touch on this very channel. But when you go to Simon Epa, you will have more revelation than ever. 
go to my Yeku General, you will have more revision more than ever. I watch their programs and I see what they are doing. They are doing very, very well. And I was supposed to imagine that they can mention these people that we should go to their program and learn. The same way our was supposed to imagine that they can gave us the DOS and told us that whatever DOS said, we should obey and follow. That is the instruction from our Supreme Amazon Nadikano, directly from him. It's not that somebody he told somebody to tell us. He told he told us directly. And every information we got from our Supreme Amazon Nadikano, we will follow to the last because they are the way to life. Even though the enemy will try to cause confusion, the enemy will try to bring false information, the enemy will try to infiltrate us, try to create division and make us fight. We will never, we will never relent in our effort. We cannot be distracted. It doesn't matter what they do. That distraction is, is failed already. They cannot succeed. A lot is going on. And a lot is going to happen in time to come. If you are one of those who is listening to gossip, you better close your ears and stop listening to gossip. Stop listening to gossip. That is why Mazin Nandikan has left a lot of messages for us. Every information he has for us is intact on the messages and brokers that he has. If you click any brokers of Mazin Nandikan, none of them is old. They are all new. Each time you listen to every broker that comes from a swing amazing that can, you get an information. An information that will inspire you and reveal something for you. Reveal something that you have forgotten. That is why it is good for us to. I tell you, each time you, you listen to a swing amazing that can, his broker, it will refresh you and give you fresh memory and show you where to follow for those who are confused. Biafra's struggle has gone to a different level. You have to walk in spirit this time. Walk physically and walk in spirit. Listen to your inner mind. Then you will know what is right and what is wrong. Follow all the instructions that have been given. They are all for our own good. Nobody can stop Biafra. Remember, nobody can give us Biafra. As we as I can even say it, that it is only Chukukukabiyama in heaven that will hand us over Biafra. That is why we are looking upon Chukukukabiyama. It doesn't matter what people do. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter the propaganda coming from east, west, north and south. We do not care. We are focused on the message of Aswila Mazen Nadikan. The foundation that he has led, that is where I want you also to focus. A lot is still going to come. A lot of challenges are still going to come. So many false information are still going to come. Do not be distracted. Do not be confused. Be sane. And the most important thing you have to be doing, continue to pray for revelations for the DOS. Continue to pray for the DOS. Pray for Aswila Mazen Nadikan, wherever he is, that God should give him revelation and the right message so that we will always be in touch, even in spirit. For those of us who are real beer friends, who have good heart, who has an open heart, you will always hear from Asun Namazin Nadekan directly. When you're walking, when you're sleeping, whatever you're doing, you will hear him speaking loud and directing you what to do. Whatever you are directed spiritually, go ahead with it. That is the way to go. We will all succeed. It doesn't matter what they do, we will succeed. As I have always told you, now, we are going to listen to another message of our Supreme Leader Mazen Nanikan. Listen carefully from the beginning to the end. You will learn a lot. You must learn something after watching this broadcast. It doesn't matter what, you will learn something. Listen very carefully. Let's listen to our Supreme Leader Mazen Nanikan, His Excellency. Let's listen. If not for IPOB, there will be no Nigeria. Will, what you have today is Islamic Republic of Nigeria. Islamic. They will write it there. Nothing will happen. It's all that I've been holding the fort. Holding the line. And what did they do? They connive with the, with the same people we are fighting to save to prescribe IPOP. Illegally, of course. Do you know that today they went to court to discuss the, the prescription of IPOB? Our case that appeal court. For how many years now? 2017, 14, sorry, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, nearly four years in a country that wants to be regarded or taken seriously as a nation. For four years, somebody did you wrong. You went to court, and you've now gone to appeal to appeal a legal decision that criminalized an entire nation. For four years, they've not had the case. Do you know what happened today? I never knew the case was coming up today. So this morning, of course, as you, as always, I was led in the spirit, and I decided to write about the prescription of IPOB using an old newspaper headline from authority that the fact that IPOB activities are not unlawful, are not unlawful, yes. Do you know what happened in Abuja today? Today was the day they were meant to hear the case 
of the proscription of IPOB and tagging us a terrorist group in Abuja, Federal Appeal Court of Nigeria in Abuja today. And what happened? As soon as they read that very publication I made, but I think I did it on both on Facebook and on Twitter. Everybody ran away from the court today. Go and ask if you have any lawyer in Abuja. Ask them. They're all run away. The court did not sit again today because they were hiding it. You know, before when they want to call my case, they say, Oh, we have 100 witnesses willing to testify. Because they know that the tagging of IPOB as a terrorist organization is flawed, both before man and God, even in their zoo laws. They, they, they were hiding it. I don't know what told me. I don't know. Something just, I said, let me write. I wrote it. And they ran away from the court. No, the appeal court of Nigeria did not sit today in Abuja because there was an IPOB file in the case, in the docs that were meant to be listened or heard today. This is how powerful we are. Because, because the judges, they assembled, seven of them, they have gone through the files. The ones they saw IPOB versus federal government of Nigeria, they dropped it. They said the court is now dismissed. Everybody should go home. Ask some, ask some senior advocates in Abuja today, the, you, do, those that went to appeal court, did appeal court sit today or not? Did they, you know, normally when a court is not going to sit, somebody will come out and announce um, that they, is it the, the registrar or the clerk or whoever, will announce that the reason why the court won't sit. They just told them everyone to run away. That IPOB file is here in the court. Ask everybody that went to appeal court today in Abuja, Wednesday, the third of March. What happened? Were you given any reason why you had to run away from the court? They will tell you no. For the first time in the history of the zoo. That's how powerful we are. That is the reason why they don't want to bring that very case to come up to appeal. Because they know you cannot proscribe people asking for a referendum. It's not possible. They know that during the argument, People will ask, perhaps one or two media houses will carry it, and people will ask, why have you not proscribed Mieti Yala and Fulani killers? They hastily, they didn't even adjourn it. They said that everyone should go away, and they all ran away from the court. That is how powerful we are. And that is to tell you that what Elohim is doing in our lives. God brought IPOB to save all of you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Robo, you're Yoruba, you're TV, you're Kanuri, you're Nupe, Jukun. It doesn't matter who you are. Bachama, it doesn't matter who you are. Biron, it doesn't matter who you are. IPOB came to save all of you. But I may, I may disagree with his style. What are that? Oh, you want the style of a flannel headsman ripping your mother? Is that the style you, you like? Here you have your presidency. Here you have people that claim that they want one Nigeria, confirming what we've always known, that Nigerian army, the foreign generals you have in the army are the ones supplying weapons to terrorists to come and kill you and rape your mothers. And you're standing up and saying, you are one. The IPOB is your problem. I saw that, that useless daily trust newspaper in the north. That Janja with publication, writing rubbish. Writing rubbish about IPOB. But when it comes to, you see how evil they are. When I say that black people are satanic, I know. You see, when it comes to IPOB, they say, IPOB attack police station. IPOB killed two policemen. IPOB killed four army officers. Not allegedly. But before our eyes, you will see army come and kill people. They will say allegedly. Black people are evil. God knows in this yogi, you people are very wicked. You are very wicked and soulless race. Very wicked. The same daily trust who say allegedly in broad daylight, the army came to my house to kill me on the 14th of September 2017, as a result of which my mom and my dad are dead today. The whole world saw it. It's on video. You know, they wrote allegedly. The army, we are alleged. But because they want to demolish full army, they came with a game plan, them and their British masters, including Obasanjo. Obasanjo is part of the problem of Nigeria. Obasanjo belongs to the Obuni Fraternity, or should I say Grand Lodge, that is affiliated to the free masonry, um, 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 not Scottish Rites, the free masonry you have in England. Obuni. That is why in the East we don't belong to groups. Ndiyot, we call them. We don't belong to secret societies. There is none. 
Forget about Okonko is a passage of right. Okonko is a passage of right. Once you, it's like a bar mitzvah. Once you have grown to the age of 13, a guy that he, Okonko, you enter Okonko, you enter Ebe, one of the fraternities. And then you form age grade from there. That's how it's done. Well, Basanjo, the reason why they trust him is because he is a member of Oboni fraternity. Of course, the Grand Lodge, they call them, that is affiliated to the Freemasonry. The fraternity in England. Go and do your research. So they trust him. England can trust him. Britain trusts him because he is their loyal slave. Oboni fraternity and Grand Lodge, they answer to, to um, the, 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 the Freemasons of England. Are you following me very carefully? Now, if we're Obasanjo, if Obasanjo were to come today to say that I don't want Nigeria to exist anymore, Obasanjo has the same, should I say, clout and influence that Azikiwe enjoyed prior to independence of Nigeria. We're Obasanjo today to write and say Nigeria is dying we don't want it to continue anymore. They will dissolve Nigeria because they trust him. And some of you must know that it was Obasanjo who brought SARS to Nigeria. Some of you don't know that. It was Obasanjo that brought SARS, special anti-robbery squad. The reason why Obasanjo brought SARS into Nigeria was because in Britain then, there was a shortage of um, organs for transplant. The reason why SARS was created was ostensibly to harvest organs to send to Europe for those who are in need. Liver, kidney, pancreas, just name it. That was why Britain funded SARS. Because then in the UK, they kept complaining, we don't have much, we don't have organs here. We don't, know how the waiting list, is called a, the waiting list, for people waiting for organ transplant was growing and growing and growing. It was Britain that set up SARS. Their job is to harvest organs and send abroad to sell. Obasanjo was the one that made it possible. There are some things that you people don't know about these. Some things, you know, when I look at, that is why I want to look at an average ignorant Nigerian with his degrees. Or should I say degrees in idiocy? I feel sorry for you. You know nothing. Who brought SARS into Nigeria? Especially the robbery squad. Who brought it into Nigeria? Why is it that every year they kill, they harvest organs and they move? The same thing that they're doing at the Iboko police station in a, in, in a Boeing state. It, sorry, Idoko. Idoko is called Idoko police station in a Boeing state. Why didn't the police come and arrest somebody and take them away and nothing will happen? It, they took our women to court. Was it two days ago? Did you see it in any paper anywhere? Did any Nigerian or even anti or anybody go to report that thing we've been saying that they kidnapped our women and we are raping them? Two days ago, they brought them to court. Did anybody go to court to find out if what we've been saying is real or not? But they came to court and they were granted bail. Black people, you people are something else. In this UG, no wonder in anywhere in the world you see black people, they are the lowest of the low. You know, for very many years, I kept asking God that why, why, why? Elohim said to me, one day you'll find out. And I found out myself that the wickedness of a black man is second to none in the animal kingdom. The most wicked race on earth is we black people. Very wicked and without conscience. We, we are lamenting and complaining about our women who were being raped. Some of you said it's a lie. But they took them to court two days ago. The same women they took them to court two days ago. Federal High Court in Abuja. No, oh, sorry, it's a Wuse Zone 2 or whatever rubbish it's called. They gave them bail. They came to court in chains. Amnesty International is aware. They never wrote any report. Human Rights Watch, they are aware. They never wrote any report. All the newspapers, we contacted all of them. They never came to court. Even to do their job is very difficult. That is why Elohim is punishing all of you with Fulani killers and murderers. Because your wickedness is too much. Your wickedness and hypocrisy is too much. Fulani brought in their people from across the Sahel, put them in our land and equipping them 
When we told you, you said, no, it's a lie. It's propaganda. It's incendiary. Look at NBC saying they will homework on Twitter. Cockroaches saying they will, they will block Radio Biafra. If people who are sensible were not able to do that, it's a bunch of corrupt idiots in Abuja. They said it's incendiary. He's a, he's a whipping up ethnic sentiment. But your presidency, Garaba Shehu, has just confirmed what I've been saying for years. That the Nigerian army have been supplying Fulani terrorists for some time now. That is why in Zamfara, there is a no-fly zone. Before you bring arms to terrorists with a helicopter, there must be a heavy-duty aircraft that must have brought it in the first place where the helicopter got those equipments from. So who brought those arms into Nigeria? Who contracted or who hired a helicopter to be flying them to? How come they don't even know where they are? Yet they come to Olu to bomb Olu. And some Ifule are busy hailing, hailing people coming to keep. Oh dear me. Sometimes I don't, I feel like not preaching, to be honest with you. I say, let the will of the Almighty be done because we are, we are honestly speaking, uh, something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with us. It's very, very terrible indeed. The helicopters are everywhere. Garaba Shehu told BBC Hausa that a no-fly zone was imposed on Zafra because of reports that jets, jets are used to ferry arms to bandits. So bandits, you claim, they are hungry. They are not killing. How come they negotiated arms deal all over the world? They hired an aircraft to come and drop the weapons for them. And all of you say, uh, we Nigerians, tomorrow morning I hear them, we Nigerians, we are in Nigeria together, the unity of our country and the patriots. <laughs> anyway, whom the gods want to destroy, they first make them mad. <laughs> Nigerians are mad. And that is why for another people in your forest killing you. People are so hopeless, so idiotic, so foolish. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know what Luga did to some of you, to did to the brains of your parents, because um I pity. I don't know. Uh, to, honestly speaking, once you're in Nigeria, I don't see. I don't see you as a human being. I'm being honest with you. I do not see you as a human being. And that is why I commend those soldiers who are leaving the zoo. How can you see? Sometimes I wonder. How can you come from the mid middle belt and you're in the army? From the east, you're from, you are in the army. From the west, you are in the army. The same army that instead of getting. These bandits they brought from Sierra Leone, from Mali, from all these places to go and fight Boko Haram. They use you to go and fight Boko Haram. And after fighting them, the same Nigeria you claim you're serving, some of their idiots like Sheikh Gumi, or should I say Abubakar Gumi, not she's not a Sheikh, only, only an Arab man can be a Sheikh. Abubakar Gumi will come out and say, um, my dear brothers, my dear bandit brothers, uh, people you should be upset with is the Christian soldiers killing you with Nigerian army uniform. These are people serving uh, supposedly their nation. Somebody endorsed by the presidency because Lai Mohammed said that he is in support of what Sheikh Gumi is saying. So that means that Lai Mohammed is in support of Sheikh Gumi. I keep calling him Sheikh. That dirty, filthy looking thing. The, what Lai Mohammed said is that I support what Abu Bakr Gumi is doing with the bandits. Which means that the federal government of Nigeria is in support of uh, Abu Bakr Gumi, in the, the new minister for, for banditry and kidnapping. And this same representative of Nigerian government said that it is Christian soldiers killing Muslims. And you are still wearing the army uniform of Nigeria. And you are fighting who? Who are you fighting? Why can't all of you leave tomorrow morning? What are you doing there? That is the reason I keep castigating black people. Are you that foolish that you cannot reason? You are in, in, in Sambisa forest fighting. Your village, your ancestral forest is being occupied by the same people they claim that you are fighting. Are you normal? Is your brain okay at all? Everybody must leave the army and the police. If you stay there, you will die. Especially those in Biafra land, you will, uh, God knows you will die. I'm telling you the truth. You will, uh, uh, I said it before. You will kill us. Many years you will kill us. Then after that, we will kill you. 
And then shortly after that, Biafra will come. I've been saying it from day one. They will kill us. We will kill them. In the end, Biafra will come. Without apologies, no idiot. I'm not apologizing. Remember when they used to kill us? It will, will come and be writing long gram. I, I, of course, myself, one of them. We are placing the world on notice for many years. After a while, when you write, they just straight away. Is it not that IPOB, that uh, toothless bulldog, they just straight away? And we kept, you know, we went into prayer and fasting. And we kept saying to the dead, please avenge your death. We pray to Elohim. Of course, you cannot pray to the spirit of the dead. It's not good. It's idolatry. Uh, we, we kept saying to Elohim, avenge you. You are a God of vengeance. Avenge your children. Fight our battles for us. We, we, as we were praying and fasting and asking God to fight our battles, from nowhere unknown gunmen came on. We don't know who they are. Like as if they are angels from heaven. And they are not fighting our battles for us. You see, all those policemen and women and army that killed our people, we don't know where these angels came from. They are called unknown gunmen. They are doing a very marvelous job now, avenging the death of their people. They want the police and the army to understand when you lose somebody, how painful it is. Because if you leave them, they will massacre everybody. They will kill. They have no soul. Nigeria army, Nigeria police, they have no soul. These are Fulani. They are led by Fulani that they have no soul. They are evil to the core, to the bottom of You know, he's a miracle working God. I don't know where he sent the unknown government. I don't know. The, the, uh, people name them unknown government. That, that's how we know them by. And uh, believe me, they're doing a very marvelous job. And I will pray more. I will fast more for many more to come. These people, they go to any, they slaughter you with a right letter. <laughs> they will, in fact, once the letter comes, they put it in the, in the dustbin. We said, okay, is that how it's done? Okay. We went, we went into prayer and fasting. We kept praying until, should I say, God answered our prayers with a non gunman. We don't know who they are, but I believe they're angels from heaven. They are the armies of heaven. And they're now the ones avenging for us. So all those police stations that they used to torture people and kill people and harvest their organs, uh, please, a uh, non gunman, find them all. Look for them and find them. Find all those police stations. If you know you are a police officer, you were involved in organ harvesting, people were disappearing. Oh, things have happened. Though. People just disappear. Parents will know where the children are. You hear mothers lamenting as they are dying. They are saying, oh, where is Chibuzo? Give me Chibuzo. Have you seen Chibuzo? You don't know that sons have killed Chibuzo. The woman will be lamenting until she passes from unconsciousness into, into death. Thinking about the son, sometimes the only son killed by the police, and now God answered uh, the prayers of people. I don't, I don't know where this unknown come. I don't know where they are from, but at least if they are keeping the police busy, the police will have to be killing innocent people, arresting them. The water, they go, they arrest innocent people. They, hey, oh, Nigeria shouldn't exist. I hate Nigeria with a passion. Shouldn't exist, honestly speaking. Only a fool will support one Zhu. Damnable zoological republic. Soldiers are leaving and they're taking them to court. The Nigerian army has ordered the immediate arrest of officers accused of deserting their post. Can you imagine such, such rubbish? You go behind the back, you keep Boko Haram to fight people. Uh, I, when people have now discovered, suddenly they have now discovered that they have been the fool for years. They have left your useless army. That's not gonna arrest them. I don't talk to God. Uh, oh my goodness. Zoo, zoological republic. Damnable zoological republic. Military documents obtained by various newspapers have now listed 101 names, ranks, and, and bank details of Iran soldiers. Every soldier should leave. Go and join the Eastern Security Network. Go and join them. They are the future. If you don't know how an army is supposed to behave, go and look at the Russian Revolution. I think of 1989 or 1990 or 91, I don't know. When Boris Yeltsin came into power. The, the apparatchiks of the, the old guard of the Communist Party in Soviet Union ordered the tanks and armor personnel carriers onto the streets. 
of Moscow to go and kill people. When the army got there, they looked at their fellow citizens. They said, we cannot open fire on these people. That is how a patriotic army behaves in the zoo. They bring in wild Fulani beasts. Animal, wild beasts. Give them AK-47 and they open fire. All of you saw the video of live shooting. It's like a, it's like a turkey shoot in Abuja of this, this, this same army slaughtering innocent Shia protesters. All of you saw the video. That video did not make it onto any major news network around the world. That was the day I became afraid of what Britain was doing. The video is everywhere. In any other country or any other country of the world, there would have been an opera. But in the zoo, nothing happened. Nothing you can kill. You know, over the years, army will come, uh, bloody civilian, they open fire. <laughs> Not anymore. We now have God in his infinite mercy have sent us guardian angels. They are known as unknown, unknown gunmen. They are the ones defending us now. We don't know who they are. And they are the ones defending the people. They are unknown gunmen. We don't know who they are. And may God bless them. Because as they are keeping the police and the army busy, they won't have time to kill innocent civilians. They cannot. Because if you kill and go back to your barracks, uh, these angels will come. On. They, are known, they are called unknown gunmen. They will come and they will avenge the death of the innocent. You can never go scot-free. It doesn't matter where you run to, you can never go scot-free. This, your nonsense in the zoo has been going on for years. You have the temerity to give Mietiala 100 billion. Mietiala will use them, buy weapons abroad. You fly it in with a jet, you distribute to the helicopter, and you come and tell us about one Nigeria. As if we are full. Are we that daft? Are we that stupid? Mad people everywhere. The zoo. Take that from nonsense to people building hotels, not to us. Is if when you have earthly considerations, you're looking for money, you are raised in but you know poverty is a, is a disease. When you're raised in abject for oh, no, no, no. when you're raised in abject poverty, you see other kids play with toys, you had no access to toys, you'll be wondering one day I will get a toy. It happened to me. I'll tell you what happened to me when I was young. As an as an analogy, so you understand me. Every time we we'll say to I'll say to, to my mom that um, we have watched on, on TV that after eating uh, you must have uh, maybe ice cream or sweet. You must have ice cream or sweet to try and uh, you know to make the food to digest. My mother will say to me that um, if you keep eating ice cream or sweet all the time, it will affect your teeth. Your teeth will be brown. It will decay. It will fall off. We kept saying no, that we must have. It. I said, okay, if that is the case, during children's day, you will see. So during children's day, I, I will go to, to, to my mom to get, of course, they used to give us money in those days to go for children's day. I um they are useless zoo independence day and children's day. And then we'll go and do matching at the stadium in town. And uh, that matching, you will see fan ice cream, Mako ice cream, they will come. That day I said, since my mom will not give me ice cream in the house after eating, I'm going to eat as much ice cream as possible today. I sat and I ate so much ice cream that I came back and became sick. And my mom asked me the reason why I, I am sick. And I said it is because I was eating ice cream during Children's Day. That is the exact behavior of Obunyon non to very poor. Once you're raised in poverty, you did not stay in a decent house, never watched any television. You want to acquire buildings. You want to acquire earthly properties. You think that driving in a very big car somehow confers upon you um, some degree of importance. You think that by maybe building building hotels somehow makes you a very wealthy man. You want to accumulate chieftaincy titles. You want to spread your hand. You start your cloth. Even if you are as tiny as Wanza, you start your cloth and you're moving about as a wealthy man. You want to be regarded as somebody. As they say, form is temporary, but class is permanent. If you have class, you have it. You don't need to struggle. People see you and they know you have class. That's one thing that is wrong with most of you in the zoo. Primitive accumulation of wealth. You think that by stealing money and accumulating money somehow you become important. That is why you have no soul and you have no conscience. That is why in most they can bring somebody from number four to number one. That is why a Supreme Court in a land can appoint somebody fraudulently in the open and we allow that idiot to remain in office. That tells you all you need to know about the zoo and why we must fight 
And please, when you before you go to bed tonight, after praying for IPOB and for ESN, also pray for unknown gunmen. Uh, pray for them, please. It is very, very important. They are the ones avenging the death. You know, all those people killed during NSARS. All those you are torturing and uh, oh, cut open their stomach. All the wickedness and brutality of army and police. That is now a group of dark angels, Avengers. They have come. They are called unknown gunmen. Every police station involved in the torture and killing of people. I am praying, please, unknown gunmen, look at them. That they may know how painful it is. As the Bible made us to understand, as you have made the women childless, so shall I make your mother childless amongst women. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The dragon flag has been raised. When we raised it, they said, oh, yeah, yeah nothing is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good now. It has come. There's no going back. They better give us Biafra. If you know those idiots, tell you know they are foolish. They are foolish by nature. They are very stubborn. If you know them, ask them to give us Biafra or else they are finished. Tell your Oboni friends and your, your Freemason friends in England to give us Biafra. Because I am a child of heaven. Nothing any mortal can do. My mission is the work I'm doing now. Nothing more, nothing less. Elohim determined it. Two, they said in two months, IPOB and others fingered in killing 62 policemen in 15 states. You see how they put IPOB as first. All of a sudden. <laughs> Full and in newspaper, that is what they do. Full and in. Britain, British High Commissioner would tell them, write it. And then she will cut it out and put it in her dispatch. To, to London to say, can you see what IPOB is doing? <laughs> they think we are foolish. All of a sudden, in all the years you were killing innocent people, you, you you thought that nothing would happen to you. Is that what you're thinking? Apply for your Somalia visa now that you still have time, that there is road transport. Apply for your Somalia visa. Because very soon, even that very embassy will stop issuing visas to criminal animals from the zoo. And uh, you know, as we keep praying all the time, and all of you must pray that that hand with which they have used to feed poison to other people must also enter their mouth. I can report today that in bandits also have struck Fulani, have also kidnapped their own fellow Fulani somewhere in Sokoto. Those who are surprised don't know what is coming, as somebody quite uh, um, uh, said today. I am strong as always, and I want you to do the same. I hope you are. I hope you are following up. Pray if you have not started praying. Pray for Sunday Mazin and Nikano. May he continue to be strong and strengthened wherever he is. May the revelations continue to come to Sunday Mazin and Nikano. May the Chukwokikabiyama continue to guide and protect everyone that is fighting for freedom in that country from Kona, Nigeria. May Chukwokikabiyama protect Aswin Lamazi Nandekano, protect Sunday Bobo, protect the Biafras, protect the Duduans, protect the Bindu Petan, protect every indigenous tribe that is sincerely fighting for freedom in the country from Kona, Nigeria. We will all be free. It doesn't matter what they do. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, freedom is sure. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video. Thank you.